Hey ICP, it's Mr. Field here. So we're gonna keep going with our chemical reactions unit. All right, so the past couple of days we've been working with identifying the types of chemical reactions. So in case you've been struggling with this, I kind of boiled this down to the bare minimum that we need with that, okay? So our five types of chemical reactions, as a reminder, we have a synthesis, which means we have one product. So one item, one compound to the right of the yield symbol. Decomposition is the opposite of a synthesis. We have a one reactant, so that's a one compound to the left of the yield sign. Again, that's the little arrow, okay, yield symbol. Single replacement, this is where we start to see multiple things on both sides, right? With a single replacement reaction, we have one compound and one single element. Now, here's the thing, that single element can look like a compound, though. It can be O2. That's fine, all right? But it just has to be bonded with itself, and we're gonna view that as a single element, okay? That's on the reactant side, and then on the product side, we get a new compound that involves that original single element, and then we get another new single element. Again, it can be something bonded with itself, but we're gonna view that as a single element instead of a compound, all right? Double replacement, this is where we have two compounds on each side and an element in each flips. All right. So again, I kind of related it to like people changing up who they are dating. All right. And then the final one, the one that I think is probably the hardest one for people to identify is the combustion reaction. All right. It always has that form of CH. So a hydrocarbon plus O2 yielding CO2 and H2O. It always has that form, even though the C and the H can have other small numbers with it. All right, and it can be very different. The key is to look at the product side and see CO2 plus H2O, and then go back and look at the reactants to see if it's O2 with a hydrocarbon, all right? So that's a reminder of our types of chemical reactions. Okay, so if we're gonna quickly go through this real quick, just so we can identify them together. All right, so our very first one, we have Na plus Cl2 yields NaCl. So from a chemical reaction standpoint, all right, we have two reactants and we have one product. So one product is a synthesis reaction, all right? So it's a, a synthesis reaction. Now we have Cl2 plus NaBr, all right? So we have a what we're going to call a single element in the Cl2 because it's just bonded with itself plus NaBr yields NaCl plus Br2. So we have a single element plus a compound, which yields a new compound and a different single element. So if it's a single element, this makes it single replacement. Right, single replacement, using our symbols from the other day. All right, so single replacement. Now we have C7H14 plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. Oh, there's... There's my products that I want to see. All right, CO2 plus H2O. Now let's go check and look at our reactants. We have O2 bonded with C7H14. Okay, so if we ignore those little numbers right there, we have CH. Hey, that's what we want. We want CH plus O2 yield CO2 plus H2O. So that means this one right here is a combustion reaction. All right. Then we have HCl. That's compound plus FES, which is another compound, yields FeCl2 plus H2S. So we got compound plus a compound yielding a new compound and another new compound. So since we have a bunch of new compounds, this one automatically becomes double replacement because we have compounds on two compounds on both sides and they are different. All right. So even though it looks really complicated, that's kind of our telltale sign that it's a double replacement. All right. And then the final one, KClO3 yields KCl plus O2. All right. So right here, we only have one reactant and then we have multiple products. So this is a decomposition. All right. All right. So again, just kind of reviewing our five types of chemical reactions. All right. So now what we're going to do today, all right, is working on balancing these chemical equations. So in a couple of these examples, the past couple of days, the it has said it's not balanced. All right. So what does that mean really? So like we gotta look into that. So 
basically what we're doing when we're balancing a chemical equation is the fact that now we're starting to look at the law of conservation of matter and the law of conservation of mass, all right? And that whole, we're not going to be creating or destroying any types of matter, okay? So we want our chemical equations to show that, all right? So we have to have the same number of elements on one side as we do the other. So if we have five carbons on the left, on the reactant side, we got to have five carbons on the right, the product side. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at. So this is making our chemical equations obey the law of conservation of mass or matter, whichever one you want to kind of use. It's going to be the really the same thing. All right. So the first thing that I say with this is that we don't want to use a pen. Got to have a pencil. All right. I actually got two just in case one breaks. All right. And then if both of those break, then I have a pen. But my goal is to just use the pencils today. All right, so a couple things that we have going on when we're talking about types of chemical um, equations and then balancing them, all right? Again, I'm using pencils, so I have it the PowerPoint up. All right, we're going to walk through this, and all right, and I have them written down here on a card. So the first rule that I have with this is keep track of each type of atom, all right? We want to keep track of each type of atom. All right. So what we're doing now is we're messing with those coefficients. All right. The number, the big numbers that are out in front of a compound or element. We're not going to do anything to those smaller numbers that are in the actual equation. So let me kind of get zoomed in here. All right. So we're not going to do anything to these small numbers. Okay. It's all the coefficients that are out in front. All right. So. One of the first things that I say to do is one, again, use a pencil. That's why I'm using a pencil and not an ink pen or something. All right. I also say, write it down on another piece of paper so you have more room to work with. All right. So what we're going to do is I've rewritten my chemical equation that we have to balance. Then what I'm going to do so I can keep my reactants and products differently. All right. So reactants, products. Okay. Okay, I have them right there. I'm going to go down from the yield sign, and I'm just going to draw a line. So that way I know which side is which, all right? Because, again, our goal is to have the same number of magnesiums on the left as we do on the right, all right? So the next step that we're going to do is we got to keep track of each type of atom. So I'm going to list them, Mg, and then we have hydrogen right here, and then we also have chlorine. So, again, this is kind of putting a lot of things together together that we've been doing so far this year. So again, we have a capital H and we have a capital C followed by that lowercase L. So that makes it chlorine and not carbon and iodine. All right. So we got to pay attention to those things. So it's putting everything together now. Like I said, we've been building for this moment. All right. And then we got to have, say, how many we have on the reactant side. So Mg, there's no little number and there's no coefficient. So that means we have one magnesium. Okay. Hydrogen, no big number, no coefficient out in front, because that's what we're going to be doing. And then there's no subscript. So again, we have one hydrogen to start. Chlorine, same idea as hydrogen, no subscript. So there's just one, right? I'm going to write these in the same order just to make my life a little bit easier. And I suggest you do that as well. All right. So again, hydrogen this time has the two behind it. So that means we have two hydrogen to start with. Mg, no little number, so there's just one. Chlorine, Cl, there's a little number two. All right, so we have our tracking of each element. Now we got to go about balancing them. So what we do with that is we go and we do a coefficient out in front. And this is kind of like distributing in math class when we have a parenthesis. So whenever in math class you have two and then you have the parenthesis of four plus two, all right. We know that that two gets distributed to both numbers. All right. Or we simplify it. And we have two times six and that goes there. So we know that this equals 12. All right. We're kind of doing the same thing up here with the coefficient is what a coefficient gets distributed to both. All right. So we're going to get started here. We've got to make sure each side is equal. All right, by putting a coefficient out in front. So we just go through and we kind of see, all right, Mg, we have one on the left, we have one on the right. So right now, we're good. We don't have to worry about it. Okay. Hydrogen, we've got one on the left, but we got two on the right. So that means we got to do something over here in front of this HCl to make hydrogen 
equal itself on the right. So one times what number equals two? Well, it's simple, it's two. All right, so now that two, that coefficient two gets distributed to both hydrogen and to chlorine. So we now have two hydrogen on the left, but we also now have two chlorine. So we're gonna keep track of that because we added to it, all right? Because what this basically means is that we have two of these molecules, all right? We have two HCLs, all right? H to a CL, all right? And we have two of those now. So we have two of those, all right? And that's why we keep track of it. So when we go back and we're keeping track to make sure we're equal on both sides, so magnesium, one and one, Hydrogen is now two on the left, two on the right. Chlorine, now two on the left, and two on the right. So we're balanced. But here's the thing. We don't leave these places empty, all right? But we also don't put a one, okay? So what we're saying is that there's only one of each of them. But we're going to leave them blank. You don't have to put the one out in front of it. If you don't see a coefficient in front of it, it automatically means that it's just one out in front of it. So our final answer right here is Mg plus 2HCl yields H2 plus MgCl2, all right? That's our final answer because we had to put that two out in front of it, all right? So that's my first tip is just keeping track, all right? And I say this is super helpful because back when I learned how to do this, it was kind of just guess and choose, all right? Put a number out in front that's not balanced and we really weren't keeping track of them, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the second one, okay? Deal with lone elements last. All right, when I say lone elements, it's these ones that are hanging out by themselves. So right here, oxygen, O2, okay? It's by itself. It's not bonded with anything else, all right? We can also just kind of say that deal with lone elements last. A lot of times, what you're going to find is that oxygen or hydrogen is going to be the lone element, all right? So I'm going to get us set up again because tip one, keep track. So reactants, products. Okay, so we've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, and we've got oxygen. All right, so again, I'm going to keep that same order over here just to make life easier. On the left side, on the reactant side, we have one carbon. We have four hydrogen and two oxygen. All right, that's the reactant side. On the product side, we only have one carbon. Hydrogen's right here, and we have two of those. Now, oxygen's weird because oxygen is in both compounds, so we got to keep track of both of them. So we have two right here, but then we also have one right here. So we have a total of three, all right? But it's in two spots, so that gets a little tricky at times, all right? So let's just go ahead and we'll start balancing. So carbon, one and one, so it's good. That makes life easy. Hydrogen, we got four on the left, and we got two on the right. So what number do we have to multiply two by to get the answer of four, all right? Because again, we're putting a coefficient out here. So what number times two equals four, all right? The answer is two, all right? So if we put a two out in front of that, okay, it does a couple things. One, changes our hydrogen now to four because two times two is four, but it also changes our number of oxygen because we have oxygen here. So two times one, because when there's not a number, it's a one. So two times one is two oxygen here, plus the two oxygen that are in the CO2. So we actually have four oxygen on the right now, even though we've only changed it in one place, okay? So our hydrogen are good, four and four. Now we have two oxygen on the left and four on the right. So we gotta have to repeat that same idea. And again, deal with lone elements last, again, a lot of times it becomes oxygen and hydrogen. So this is super helpful that oxygen is the last thing that we got to fix. If we would have tried to fix that first, it would have caused us problems. All right, so O2, kind of the same process as our H2 earlier. What number times two equals four? Well, once again, it's a two. So we get a four out in front. So that means we are now completely balanced because we have one carbon on each side. We have four car hydrogens and four oxygens now. So our final answer is CH4 plus two O2s, because again, we have two of those happening, all right? Okay. 
yields CO2 and two H2Os. All right, so again, we have to have two molecules of high, of water on the product side, all right, on this combustion reaction. All right, so again, deal with the lone elements last. A lot of times this is oxygen or hydrogen. Okay, because a lot of times they're going to kind of work themselves out a lot of times. All right, so, but again, this is what our final answer is. Okay, and this is what we would rewrite. Okay, so that's number two, tip number two. Tip number three, you can never make an even number odd, okay? All right, we can never make an even number odd, no matter what we multiply it by. Now, you're probably sitting there like, oh, Mr. Field, but I know in math class to make an even number odd, all I have to do is multiply it by a half. Well, that's math class. In chemistry, when we're dealing with the law of conservation of matter and mass, we're not using halves of these compounds, all right? It's got to be a whole compound, all right? We can't use a half of a compound. We got to have the whole thing. So again, with that being the case, we are never going to have a coefficient of 2.5 or 1.5, okay? It's got to be a whole number every single time. So because of that, we can never turn an even number odd. However, we can, you can turn an odd into an even. Okay, you can do that. All right. So we're going to work through doing that now. So here's our equation. Once again, I'm going to split it right there at the yield sign because these are our reactants. These are our products. I'm going to keep track of what we have. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see it a little bit easier. Okay, so we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and then we have chlorine and oxygen. So we have four elements on a reactant side. So we should have that on the product side. And we do So carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, and oxygen. On our reactant side, carbon here. And that's the only place we have it. So we have one carbon to start with. We got two hydrogen, two chlorine, and two oxygen. On our product side, we have carbon right here. And that's the only place for it. So we got one hydrogen. It's only right here, and there's two of them. Chlorine, it's over here. It's two, so this is looking pretty easy so far. And then here, once again, oxygen being in two different places, kind of like the last one. So we have two oxygen here plus the oxygen right here. So we have three total oxygen, but it's in two different places. So when we go through this, carbon's already balanced. That's great. Hydrogen's already balanced. Great. Chlorine, also already balanced but it's our oxygen that's our sticking point, okay? Now again, our rule, you can never make an even number odd, all right? So no matter what we do, we cannot turn this two of oxygen into an odd number, okay? So this is where we have to start looking and thinking about, all right, what number do they both go into, all right? And to figure that out, just, the, just like in math class, the trick on that, to figure out what number they both go into, you multiply those together. So we're gonna take the two, of our oxygen on the reactant side, multiply it by the three of our product oxygens. So six. So we want to get our number of oxygens to be six. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the reactant side. So there's two here and we know we got to multiply it by three. So a coefficient goes out in front. So that becomes a six. Okay. And now we got to turn this one into a six as well. But remember, we have two oxygen here plus one oxygen here, all right? This is the one that we wanna mess with right here is with the H2O, because we don't really wanna mess with this one because it's already even. This is gonna be the one that's hard because it's just a one, because it's an odd number. So the nice thing is we can turn this odd number into an even. Two plus what number equals six? Four, right? Yeah. So two plus four equals six. So what number do we have to put in front of this H2O, which doesn't have a little number, so that means it's just a one. One times what equals four? And again, the answer should be a four. So we're gonna put a four in front of this one. So now we have two oxygen here with the CO2, plus four single oxygens because we have four molecules of H2O. So two plus four 
is six, okay? So that makes our oxygen good. However, remember this coefficient not only goes to the oxygen, it also goes with the hydrogen right here. So we messed with our hydrogens. So we gotta go back and fix that because this is no longer good, all right? Because now we actually have four times two, which is eight. All right, we have eight hydrogen on our product side, so we got to fix it over here. So again, to fix that, we need to make this two hydrogen, which is right here, and we got to multiply it to get to eight. So again, two times four is eight. That's good. But once again, now we've messed with every element because this hydrogen was bonded with both carbon and chlorine, and that four goes to all three. So we got to fix all those. So carbon is now four. And chlorine is now also an eight. So once again, we got to jump back to the product side. This is where it gets confusing. This is why I say keeping track helps. All right. So we got to get carbon up and we got to get chlorine up. All right. So if we go, we got to put a four in front of here because carbon is just a single element. So it is now at a four. But man, here we go. We mess with our oxygen again because now we have four times two. So there's eight right there plus our four that was here. So eight plus four, now 12. So we actually have 12 oxygen on the right side. So we're going to have to go back. We're going to have to fix our oxygen again, which is just wonderful, right? Carbon's good. Hydrogen, good. Chlorine, we got to put a four out in front. Okay, so that makes that now an eight, but then our oxygen's back to being off. So we gotta fix it. So we're gonna get rid of that three that we originally put out here. We're gonna fix that, all right? So now here we are, okay? So we're at two and we gotta get 12. So we're gonna put a six, all right? Because that makes it be 12, all right? So now when we look at our final equation, we have a four, as a coefficient, and then a six, and then another four, and then another four, and then another four, all right? So even though we've gone up a lot, now we see that each of these coefficients can actually be divided by the number two, all right? So we're actually gonna cut all of these. So our three should have worked, right? Like it should have worked earlier, but just with the way we go about keeping track, we ended up having too many, and now we're gonna reduce it down. So our final answer, is going to end up being 2CH2Cl2 plus 3O2 yields 2CO2 plus 2H2O plus 2Cl2. All right, because now we should be completely balanced again because it, once again we have six oxygen right here, all right, between the four and the CO2, and then the two and the H2O. All right, so that's six and six. So our oxygens are good, and everything else we know will work out nicely. Okay, the only reason why we ended up with too many is because of the tracking aspect, but it's okay to have to reduce it. But again, you can only reduce it if each number, each coefficient can be divided by that same number. So it's nice that they were all even numbers and we could divide it down. All right. Our last one. Okay, the last one, and I forgot to write this one before we went. Okay, if you're unsure of where to start, let me get this written down, just start with the first element that you see. And that's kind of what I've been doing anyways. All right. Okay, so H2. So there's our equation. Sorry, I didn't have that one written down. I thought I did. Okay, so again, reactants on the left, products on the right. We've got Fe. We've got H and we've got O. So iron, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, again, I'm getting that because of the co the subscripts that are with the numbers. All right. So again, I've kind of already been doing this. I've been working with the first element every single time. All right, and that's usually where you want to start because a lot of times you want to leave hydrogen, oxygen, because they're usually the single elements, because here's hydrogen by itself. You want to save those for the end. So it makes sense to just kind of start with the first one you see. If the first one you see is a hydrogen, oxygen, I re recommend skipping it. Okay. So in this case, I just kind of work from left to right. 
All right, so we have one on the left of iron and two on the right. So we'd have to put a two out in front. Okay, so that becomes a two. All right, so that means iron's good. Now we have hydrogen. We have two on the left. We got two on the right, so we're good there. Oh, but here's our friend oxygen, once again, messing with everything. So we got one on the left, three on the right, but we only have one place for it here. So that's kind of nice. So what number times one equals three? Well, the answer is three. So that changes our oxygen, but it also changes our hydrogen. Because again, that gets distributed to both. All right. So three times two is six. So we got to fix our hydrogen now. So in order to do that, we got to multiply it by a three. So that becomes a six. All right. So once again, here we are. We got two irons. All right, which is great. We've got six hydrogen, which is great. And we got three oxygen, which is exactly what we want. And again, I just kind of started with the first element and worked from, from there. Okay. So again, these can take some time. You might make a mistake or you might have to go back in and refix an element that you already had balanced, but that's kind of the name of the game when you're balancing these chemical equations. All right. So when you have questions with this, all right, do not hesitate to email me to set up a conference or just drop in on the Canvas conferences, guys. All right. It's really important. This is stuff that is going to take some time. All right. We're going to have to practice it a couple times. All right. Have a good rest of the day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. See you guys in a week, guys.